people often ask me why I am against alternate or traditional medicines and my answer is simple. First, they have not been tested for their efficacy and does not undergo clinical trials. Second, they have not been tested for their safety. If I am to take something as a medicine, I would rather trust something that has undergone clinical trials scientifically and is evidence-based and it is not just based on anecdotal evidences or experiences of a few. And so should any of you. And yet, there are millions who fall prey to fake healers who practice all forms of pseudoscientific traditional medicine systems. We will look at one such famous healing system today and it is so famous that they conduct a festival for it. I am referring to the fish medicine or fish prasadam cure for asthma for which the city of Hyderabad is famous for. And this has been going on, believe it or not, since 1845. Hundreds of thousands of people come to take this fishy medicine in the hope of curing their asthma. Let us look at the main aspects of this form of treatment to see why this is unscientific. But I really fish, I mean wish, you would click on that subscribe button before the intro ends. Welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which promotes scientific temper and debunks pseudoscience. First, we need to understand what is asthma. Asthma is a condition in which your airways narrow and swell and may produce extra mucus. This can make breathing difficult and can trigger coughing, a whistling sound called wheezing when you breathe out. For some people, asthma is a minor nuisance. For others, it can be a major problem and interferes with daily activities and may lead to a life-threatening asthma attack. Asthma is thought to be caused by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Environmental factors include exposure to air pollution and allergens. Having allergies can increase your risk of getting asthma. People can develop asthma after exposure to things that irritate the airways like air pollution, dust mites, pet dander, fumes, strong smells, smoking, etc. These can be especially harmful to infants and young children whose immune systems have been finished developing. If your family has a history of asthma or allergic diseases, you have a greater risk of developing the disease. Curiously, yet another thing that is known to cause asthma is exercise. Another important factor, especially in India, is occupational exposure such as working with harsh chemicals and exposure to dust like flour, wood, etc. So the most important thing to remember here is that asthma is a pulmonary disease which affects your airways and it has various causes and asthma attacks are intermittent. It is true that there is no cure for asthma in modern medicine as yet but there are treatments. First and foremost is to identify the cause of asthma. As I mentioned there are many factors that can result in this disease. So an evidence-based approach would be to find out what is causing it and try to reduce the exposure to it. If you are asthmatic due to dust or smoke or air pollution, shifting to a location with lesser exposure may fix the issue. In some cases, some people might have to resort to inhalation of corticosteroids. But the underlying factor is the correct identification of the cause. Today there are reliable pulmonary tests such as spirometry that can aid in diagnosis. Now that you know what asthma is, what happens in the body and what causes it, let's look at our fishy treatment. This treatment is the monopoly of the Baithini family based in Hyderabad who claims that a saint gave this magic formula to their ancestor way back in 1845. Every year they conduct a festival of sorts on the day of Mrigasira Karti. It usually falls on the 7th, 8th or 9th of June. Lakhs of people attend this function and it is supported by the local government and administration. The patient is made to swallow a live fish called a murrel, which measures about 4 to 6 centimeters in length. A yellow colored herbal medicine ball is inserted into the mouth of the fish before it is pushed down the throat of the patient. Though the medicine itself is administered free of cost, the patient has to buy the murrel fish which costs between Rs 20 and Rs 50 a piece from the local market. Maral or snakehead fish is a freshwater fish found in the coastal districts of Andhra Pradesh and is available in plenty on this day. In fact, it has also been made the state fish of Telangana. Now the Gout family is not willing to reveal a secret recipe of this medicine by conveniently saying that the medicine would lose its effect 
if the secret is revealed. Now this one statement is evidence enough that this is a phony treatment. Now many people have questioned the method of action of this medicine. What the family has revealed is absolutely out of this world. The family insists the fish cleans the throat and air passages as it travels down to the stomach where the herbal medicine begins to work its magic. Oh fish! As you swallow something down your food pipe, the fish is supposed to clean the windpipe which carries air to the lungs. Now that is fishy, really really fishy. If homeopathy challenges chemistry, this treatment sure challenges biology and anatomy. The treatment has to be taken thrice over a period of 45 days and the patients are supposed to follow a strict diet prescribed by the Baithani family. The patients who want to get rid of asthma and respiratory ailments completely have to take the fish prasadam continuously for 4 years. For people who are vegetarian or for those who don't want to eat a live fish, the family uses jaggery instead of the fish. Of course, with claims that it will take longer time to cure if the fish is not used. The Gout family claims that hundreds of thousands of people have been completely cured of asthma with this medicine. Obviously, no traditional medicine survives without these anecdotal experiences. A person with asthma visits Hyderabad and takes this treatment. A few days later, he feels better due to whatever reason and they may attribute their getting better to gulping down of the fish. Then they will share this with many others and the queue would continue to grow. If they don't get well, they are not likely to tell anyone that they have spent a lot of money for a sham treatment. Who wants to look like a fool in front of others? So only the positive anecdotes gets the reach. This is how all of these non-evidence based treatment systems work. They attribute correlation to causation which is a logical fallacy. Now what are the problems with this kind of treatment? One, there are only anecdotal evidences as always. No clinical trials have been done. No one knows what is in those medicine balls and no one has done any follow up to find out its efficacy. A journal in the British Medical Journal states that a doctor from a reputed private hospital in Hyderabad had sent about a dozen patients to be treated with this fishy treatment some years ago and monitored variables such as their forced vital capacity and forced expiration volume before and after the treatment but he found no improvement. He also followed 100 recipients of this quackery for 6 months and he could not see a single patient whose condition either improved or who has got completely cured with this fish medicine. He also says that he has seen 10 to 15 patients whose condition had worsened after the treatment. It is very clear that this system works on the placebo effect where the brain tricks itself to making you believe you are feeling better. Also the fact that asthma is a disease known to have peaks and troughs just makes it more plausible that you may feel better sometime after eating the fish. A change in setting can easily make a person feel better if his or her asthma is due to environmental factors. For example, a person living in the dense pollution of Delhi who suffers from this disease could feel better when they visit Hyderabad which is less polluted. So whether they eat the fish or not may be irrelevant. Fish fatty oils such as omega-3 are said to possess some anti-inflammatory properties. However, this has not been clinically proven and also a single dose is unlikely to provide any benefit as claimed. More importantly, because no one has tested what is the ingredients of this medicine, no one has tested for its safety either. Any substance other than food for curing people falls under the category of a drug and its ingredients must be disclosed to the consumers as per the law. But who cares here? This kind of treatment is a blatant violation of the Drugs and Magical Remedies Objectionable Advertisements Act of 1954 which controls advertising of drugs in India. It prohibits advertisements of drugs and remedies that claim to have magical properties and makes doing so a cognizable offence. But with the state administration supporting the practice by providing transport, accommodation, food and essential services for the thousands who flock to Hyderabad, there is very little chance that anyone is going to act against this practice. For them, it's a big business whether or not the medicine is free of charge or not. The government has donated 6 acres of land for the family to conduct this festival. What more do you want? In fact, a PIL was filed in the High Court some years ago but nothing really came out of it. The Gout family used to call this as fish medicine but due to protests, 
they later changed the name to Fish Prasadam. Unfortunately, India is a land of many such shady treatments. These traditional treatments would continue to thrive as long as there are people who are willing to be victims of such pseudoscientific rubbish. People just don't want to know what they are consuming as medicine as long as they feel that their disease has been cured. This is just the wrong way to think. You ought to know. You have the right to know. You should know what is in those pills. The festival has thankfully been put on hold for the last two years due to the COVID pandemic. However, it remains to be seen how many people would flock next month to Hyderabad. We are ready to fall prey for herd mentality and we are so gullible that we can believe anything based on faith. We are ready to gulp down anything down our throats in the name of faith. So what is a little fish with some herbal paste makeup? But I really hope that people wake up to the perils of such sham treatments and avoid them. Until then, the innocent fishes would continue to be pushed down gullible throats and people would continue to believe it will clear their airways. My intention is to spread awareness against such dubious practices. So if you are in favor, please share this video so that it reaches many more and the next time the queues are lesser. Oh fish, look at the time. I hope you like this video. Do come and let me know what you think of this fishy treatment. I will be back soon with yet another interesting science video. Until then, it's bye bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.